Hello and welcome to the 48th Trofeo Princesa Sofia Abiristar, hosted at Palma de Mallorca. This kickoff regatta is quite simply the meeting point for every sailor, featuring all the Olympic classes. Numbers are impressive. 646 boats and 833 sailors representing 54 countries were on the starting line. We were there to capture the epic moments as the sports heroes measured up against the new stars and the first timers in the Olympic classes. Their starting point is different, but their goal is the same. Be the best. Welcome to Trofeo Princesa Sofia. Bienvenidos a España. Bonjour. <laughs> Buongiorno. <laughs> For many athletes, Trofeo Princesa Sofia Abiristar resounds with special memories. Jordi Xamar, this young Spanish sailor, won his Olympic ticket to Rio 2016 here last year. Xamar has teamed up with a new partner as he seeks to recreate a winning edge in a new partnership. I think it's one of the most special regattas of the season. Also for, for this, all the Spanish sailors, I'm Spanish and it's like the home race, it's uh, special to be here in Palma, the conditions are amazing, it's a pleasure to, to sail. Uh, it's a good level regatta, the, there are really good sailors here and, and well our expectations always are, are trying to be in the front positions, top three positions, but, but well, we're a new team with new coach and, and also we want to to keep learning from getting ready for the world, so that is going to be the main goal of this season. Olympians Panayotis Mantis and Pavlos Kayalis secured their selection to Rio 2016 here in Palma de Mallorca. The rest is history, Olympic bronze medals. They are back and Tokyo beckons. Palma, Princesa Sofia Trophy, we are excited to be here. It's a great event, a great place with all the big athletes. And it's even more special for us because last year we won our trials here for the Olympic Games in Rio. In 2017, the beginning of a new Olympic cycle, uh, we're excited, we can't wait to, to see our opponents, how they prepare this themselves and meet in the, in the races. For us it's always a goal and uh, the best way to start our season from this regatta. For 43-year-old Robert Seid, the laser class legend, the story is also new. This five-time Olympic medalist first experienced Olympic glory 20 years ago at the 1996 Olympics, securing gold in the laser class. He followed up with silver in Sydney 2000 and gold in Athens in 2004 before switching to the star class. Side added a silver in Beijing 2008 and bronze in London 2012 to his medal hall before returning to his first love, the laser class, for Rio 2016. Now, the Brazilian has decided to adapt his talent to master the highly competitive 49er skiff as he pushes himself for a seventh Olympic appearance and an inspirational story. To me, uh, switching from the laser to the 49 is like a new beginning. The 49 is a great class, it's a boat that is it's quite extreme. We sail with uh, three sails, a symmetric spinnaker, double trapeze. 
So it's a big challenge for me. And to be here in Palma at the beginning of the sailing season, everybody's here, everybody wants to sail against uh, the best sailors, and uh, Palma is a great scenario. It's the beginning of the, of the sailing season internationally. Last year's winner in the RSX Women, Olga Maslovitz, has now partnered up with Ika Martinez in the NACRA 17. Olga has four Olympics to her credit and massive experience from a very physical class. Will this help her as she transitions from a solo sailor to racing in a team in this high-speed and unpredictable boat? So we're here in the Princess Sofia starting a long-term project with the Olympics. Um, Olga and myself, we didn't sail much, so uh, now it's just a real beginning. So we're feeling a little bit lost in, in, some, uh, in some points, but um, I'm especially feeling very happy for the future. Uh, I'm 100% uh, sure that we have a lot of potential and, and we can bring it to something very nice. So uh, yeah, let's keep working long term. There are lots of good things and some unexpected things for me. Definitely high speed skills from windsurfing helps a lot on catamaran and uh, that's a good thing and th there are big points of me of course that I'm not that much into a sailing, pure sailing sailing and I don't know a lot about boat, how it's functioning, what's the system work and, and definitely teamwork, yeah that's my weak point, I used to sail alone so now I'm learning a new thing. So, yeah, for, for us it's an extremely um, uh, special thing. We, we, we put in, we're trying to put two walls together, the windsurfing wall with the catamaran wall. And uh, so uh, I could feel since the first moment that, um, I mean, there is such a good things that we can mix. So uh, now it's up to us to, if we are able to, from this, mix to do something very good no? and take all the good things from each part. Yeah, after lots of years sailing in R6, top level R6, five Olympic campaigns, now jumping into NACRA, new beginning, very new beginning and um, yeah, Princess Sophie is giving us some challenge to see where we are and what we need to work on. From changes in class to even bigger changes in the life of an athlete. The birth of a child is a lifetime experience and a major change in a woman's life. How do women balance being a top professional athlete and a mother? In the very physical RSX women class, it has proven possible. Three women combine their role as a mother and maintain their top world ranking. Marina Alabao, Blanca Machon and Sofia nocetti Klepatska. They return to the racetrack as different athletes and, if anything, being a mother motivates them even more, increasing the focus on success. After 2012, I won the, the Olympics, and that was the moment that I take to be a mom. So I've been a year out of the competition. But yeah, I'm not the first, and I'm for sure I'm not the, the last to do that. But yeah, like, you need a year to recover, but then I think you, you come back stronger, no? So now I'm leading in the Trofeo Princess Sofia, and even the second one, she, she's a mom too, so. Yeah, it's not. It's, we have good support in Spain for women and for mom as well. So yeah, I'm happy to be a mom and to be a professional athlete. So Trophy Princess Sofia is really important for me. It's always be a, a national as well.
So since I, I have a mom, uh, it's really hard to, to back to training because uh, I need to manage with everything, with the grandmothers, <laughs> with the husband, with the baby and travel and organize everything together. And uh, for me it's uh, easy because uh, I have uh, a lot of support when I need more power in my body. <laughs> so it's hard to, to go training, go sailing, uh, only 10 times on the water since uh, I get pregnant for one year. <laughs> So it's, it's hard and uh, I will try to, to train a lot of physical training at home and then when I'm ready I, I will compete. So I need to pump a lot on the water and do it my best on the gym and in the bike and then I start to competing again. I'm a mom of two kids. Uh, I give birth in 2009 to my son. Now he's seven years old, Mariano. And Maria, uh, born in 2013. And my family is now here with me. Uh, I've been already in Palma de Mallorca and I compete uh, Princesa Sofia a lot of uh, times, like 10 or maybe more. <laughs> Palma de Mallorca is popular not just for sailors racing a Trofeo Princesa Sofia Ibiristar, but also for training through the rest of the season, and is of course hugely popular as a holiday destination. I love Tropio Sofia for the sunshine, the beaches and the racing. Great weather here, challenging conditions and we always get a top level fleet. I love Trofeo Princesa Sofia because uh, I love uh, Olympic sailing. I love Princesa Sofia because everyone is here. I love the uh, Princess Sofia regatta because it's the perfect start of the 2017 season. Because it's the first chance we have to race in the year. Because it's a great event, really tough sailing wise. For meeting my friends. Bienvenidos a Campastilla. Bienvenidos a Campastilla. Welcome to Campastilla. The Trofeo Princesa Sofia Abiristar is the sport's largest Olympic sailing regatta with numbers similar to the Olympic Games. Forty starts per day were the norm across six different sailing courses, a huge feat of logistics and management. <laughs> Communication, a well-organized schedule and hard work was needed to keep everything on schedule.
also key for their success was the smile on the staff's faces. We move to catch up with the action in the performance racing machine that is the 470 class. Light wins during the qualification series boded well for Jordi Zamar and new crew Nico Rodriguez. The pair sailed well, winning two of the qualification races to safely advance to the final series. Light winds continued throughout the week until all change on the final day. The wind rocked up to 30 knots with big waves. Perfect conditions for the 470, although requiring teams to adapt and change their strategies. Sweden's Carl Fredrik Fuch and Marcus Daghammer went into the double points medal race with a five point advantage over the Spanish. Their battle saw both teams engaging at the back of the fleet, leaving the door open for Japan's Tetsuya Izoyaki and Akira Takayanaki to finish the medal race in third and pick up the overall series victory. Second to Sweden and third to Spain. Olympic bronze medalists Mantis and Kayalis won the medal race to finish fifth overall. In the competitive 49er class, Robert Side and Gabriel Borges made impressive gains to finish 11th in what is only their second major regatta. Clearly demonstrating their potential, but proving there is a long way to go to repeat Side's past glory moments and medal achievements. The strong winds kept the 49er fleet off the racetrack, so no medal race. Final standing saw first place go to the British pair of James Peters and Flynn Sterrett, second to Spain's Diego Botin Le Chabert and Iago Lopez Mara, and third to Dylan Fletcher Scott and Stuart Biffle of Great Britain. Along with our coach Pepe, our goal was to finish on the podium. We have not been able to compete today because of the weather conditions. There was too much wind. But ending the regatta in second place is more than good. We are very happy. Seventy women racetrack, the Dutch team of Aphrodite Zegers and Anna Loez van Veen were favourites for the title. This world-ranked number one partnership finished fourth at Rio 2016, 
and won the opening events of 2017, the 470 North American Championship, Sailing World Cup Miami, and the 470 Carnival Race. So lining up in Mallorca, there was only one goal for them, to win. Smart and strategic racing propelled the pair to the front of the fleet and victory. Second to Poland's Agnieszka Skrzypulek and Yolanda Oga, and third to Spain's Silvia Masterparis and Patrizia Cantero. A very nice week. We had uh, a lot of light winds during the week, and uh, we were actually looking forward to some racing in light winds to see how we were going in that condition. And uh, finishing off the middle race with some extreme wind was. Uh, was nice. We we saw a lot of conditions now. Um, after the games, we we just took all the experience that we had the last four years, and we kept working on our focus points and the make our weak points better. So uh, yeah, we just tried to do our best, and uh, for now it pays off. So it's nice to see that. Uh, working hard like we do now and uh, of course we hope for some more nice results the rest of the season. We're gonna do all events. We uh, do, um, we're gonna be in the air. We're gonna be in Santander. We're gonna be uh, in the Europeans, in the Worlds, in all the events. And the Delta Lodge Regatta, of course. Don't miss it. In the Finn class, Max Salmonen had a great performance, winning all the final series races. Second place to Hungarian Zombor Beretz and third to Turk Alekan Kayanar. In the competitive and crowded laser standard and laser radial classes, Italian Francesco Marai and China's Don Shuang Yang won respectively. Germans Victoria Jezok and Annika Lorenz dominated the 49er FX class, winning with a 49-point difference from the second-placed Helena Nass and Matty Ronningen. Third place for Singaporeans Kimberly Lim and Cecilia Lowe. Competing in light winds throughout the week meant hard and physical pumping, or fanning of the sail, to propel the RSX boards around the racetrack. A totally different story for the medal race series though, as 35 knots of breeze hit the track, as sailors also trialled the new test medal race format for the first time. This saw the top 12 top sailors race two qualification series, until they ended up with the top three. In a winner-takes-all final endurance speed race, these three fought for the medals. Once again, Poland proved its dominance, winning both the men and women titles. Taking victory a step further, Zofia nocetti klapatka also won the overall Trofeo Princesa Sofia Abirastar title. A huge achievement. It's after final, just I'm really happy I won uh, this race. It was really hard condition, really windy and wavy, but uh, overall um, each day for me was good. Win or lose, there is little time to rest as athletes return to intensive training in readiness for the next event. The 48th Trofeo Princesa Sofia Abirastar closed with a prize-giving ceremony held against the backdrop of Parma's iconic Santa Maria Cathedral. A spectacular event and wonderful memories, which will be revisited next year. The uh, Trofeo Princess Sofia is a special event for me because it was the first uh, event when I was young, international event, so it's almost my favorite regatta. It was a great week for us, Palma had really nice conditions again, nice weather, nice winds. So we are very happy for this event and we are happy for the second place.